Corsair's H100i Pro is the third Corsair product to use Asetek's sixth generation pump solution. Asetek didn't push performance in significant ways with the Gen 6 pump, but instead focused on endurance improvement and reducing hot spots that encourage permeation of the tubes. This time, just to keep things sort of interesting, we'll talk about how pump speed impacts the performance of this particular cooler and how the stock thermal paste application can also impact performance, a topic we've explored with previous Gen 5 coolers from other vendors. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks-focused build, which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. So a quick overview of how all this works. Gen 5 and Gen 6 pumps are from Asetek, a supplier that makes the pumps and radiator solution for basically all of the closed-loop liquid coolers on the market. Not 100% of them, but pretty darn close. And their main competitors are people like Dynatron, who don't do a whole lot these days, used to do the Antec cooler coolers. The other competitors would be Enermax or uh, Apoltec or people like that. There aren't a whole lot of them. Cool it or Cool IT, if you prefer, makes some of Corsair's other coolers as well. So most of the market, probably two thirds or greater at this point, would be Asetek made. That's the supplier. Corsair had a significant hand in designing the Gen 6 pump by Asetek, though. Corsair was the first client to use the Gen 6 pump, and so it has a couple of their changes on it. One of them is more RGB, an integrated RGB PCB to handle all of the LEDs, something that NZXT had sort of pioneered with their Kraken series and later was brought over to other coolers like EVGAs and so forth. Another thing that Corsair worked on with their specific version of the Gen 6 coolers is a smaller cold plate by a little bit. It's not a whole lot smaller. They have a smaller pump housing and pump plate overall, so everything's just a little bit smaller. And they're also responsible for making the fans, which is something that basically all the manufacturers have to do to have any kind of difference between one cooler or another. So those are the primary differences with Gen 6. Gen 6 really was just driving to improve the endurance. So Asetek had a couple of known hot spots in the Gen 5 coolers where with higher liquid temperatures, 60C plus, you start having plastic deformation or plastic melting or other issues with just permeation of the tubes where the liquid seeps into the tubes and it never comes out again, so you'd have to refill it really to keep it peak operation. And that's an issue of the liquid not moving through the different ins and outs of the cooling solution in a way that would keep the temperature sort of uniform around the tubes, the plastic, and keep the liquid at the temperature that it should be, which is under 60 degrees Celsius. So that's mostly been improved. Unfortunately, this means that the performance has not really changed. To be fair, it's hard to make performance any better with a liquid cooler when you're working with this form factor. But you're not, there's no reason to expect significant uplift in performance versus, say, an H100i V2, which is the predecessor to this one, and the H100i V1 before that. Before getting into some of the thermals and stuff like that, another quick explanation of what's going on with those names. So the H100i, the V2 version, was basically the offspring of an IP issue, intellectual property issue, with the radiator specifically, as far as we understand it. So uh, H100i V1 had a slightly different radiator than H100i V2. That's the difference. And then H100i Pro, the one we're looking at today, is the Gen 6 pump. And that's all that's different there. So if you have an H100i already and it's working fine, there's no reason to even consider this. But if you don't have a liquid cooler, then that's where our testing comes in and it might be worth your consideration. The H100i Pro is 120 bucks. So it's continuing the trend of more expensive coolers in the Gen 6 department. Its most closest competition would be something like the H115, the H115i. It's a Corsair product. So Corsair's 280 CLC from Gen 5 Asetek pumps is about $5 more than this one, which is a 240 CLC. It's got two 120 fans. And that's something we'll be talking about more towards the conclusion when we look at the value proposition of everything. So let's get into the thermals. We're gonna start with pump speed thermals and look at how the pump speed impacts it. This cooler has three options, if unless you wanna customize it. It's silent, balanced, and full performance. And then it also technically is one of the first Corsair or the first Corsair 
uh, H series cooler that has a zero RPM mode. And all that means is that under low loads, the fans won't spin if you allow it to do that. So it, that's, it's not that special. It means that it'll be quieter when idle, basically. And then when the liquid temperatures tick to a certain point or the CPU temperature ticks to a certain point, it'll kick the fans on. But other than that, it's another H100 series cooler. So let's go through the thermals for the pump speeds and for the stock paste application versus our own application. As always, for testing methodology, check the link in the description below for the full article where we define how we test these coolers. The pump speed thermals are up first. The best way to look at pump speed impact on temperature is to plot the temperature chart over time rather than using our steady state charts. Plotted against time, the full speed and balanced speed pump settings equate one another when idle, generally at around 6 to 8 degrees Celsius delta T over ambient, whereas the silent pump speed sits closer to 10 to 11 degrees over ambient. As the workload ramps and cools, part of our test shows how well the coolers can soak thermal changes. We see the balanced and silent pump speeds perform roughly equally, plus or minus one degree of each other. The full speed test is consistently cooler, at times by as much as four to five degrees. This is the entirety of the difference. Generally speaking, these fans at 100% speed are moving fast enough to deal with the heat without needing the extra help from a pump. There is a difference, but it tends to be in heaviest load periods and only on the order of four to five degrees. The pump itself is inaudible over the fans in this configuration, but a particularly whiny pump, which sometimes happens in normal manufacturing variants, might have audible frequency noises that are up pitched versus the normal lower hum. If that's the case, dropping to balanced speed will help minimize these noises, but won't give a ton of performance up. Noise normalized testing is next. This helps us evaluate the overall efficiency of the cooler and look at how good it is at cooling when considering the fans at the same noise level. So by normalizing the noise to 40 dBA for all coolers tested, we're able to kind of kick out the coolers that are only chart topping by nature of having 50 or 60 dBA fans, which is kind of cheating because no one's really gonna run them at that noise level to begin with. So we equate the noise to 40 dBA for all coolers tested here. And at a matched noise level, we can then compare the fan quality and pump quality without worrying about whether or not the coolers are sort of cheating with high noise fans. So let's get into those and see how well this one does at 40 dBA when compared to its predecessor and some of its competitors. The Corsair H100i Pro at 40 dBA required roughly 1550 RPM fan speeds for total system noise, landing the cooler right around where the previous Corsair H100i V2 performed. The H100i V2 is near enough to the H100i Pro that we're bordering margin of error, but just outside of it. As we found previously, the new Asetek Gen 6 pump is slightly anemic when compared to Gen 5. There's not a huge difference, and that manifests itself in marginal, more or less immeasurable performance loss. Theoretically, this is matched with endurance improvements, but that will require years of user experience to really prove. The EVGA CLC240 is a bit cooler at 40 dBA, somewhat within the differences of Gen 5 and Gen 6 when combined with other variants and fan differences. The H100i Pro isn't doing anything particularly impressive in this benchmark, but also isn't awful, to be fair. It's just fine, and that's about it. The cooler isn't offensive in its performance, but it's also not exciting. Flat out thermal testing places the H100i Pro fairly far down the charts when left with the stock paste application. By default, Asetex compound is well applied, but doesn't cover the entire IHS or cold plate. This reduces thermal performance, particularly on large heat spreaders that are found on X99 or X299 CPUs. Completely stock, but at full fan and pump speeds, the H100i Pro performs at around 41 degrees over ambient, placing it near the X42 140 millimeter cooler after applying paste manually. As always, we manually apply a layer of paste across the entire IHS for our tests unless otherwise stated, and that does happen sometimes, and that's where our performance delta comes in. The difference is that we wanted to demonstrate stock versus manual application for this round just to keep it interesting. Manually applied, the cooler puts us closer to 38 degrees, which is just shy of the original H100i V2. Some of this is test variance, and we aren't that far out of the range for error margins, while the rest is attributable to two things. One is fan RPMs. These are 100 RPM slower on this particular unit, which is within the 10% variance for fan manufacturing. And the other thing is some reduction in performance attributable to Asetek's pump. 
This level of performance has the H100i Pro near the H150i at 40 dBA, the X72 with a silent pump, both of which are 360 coolers, and the 280 XLC at 1400 RPM. In terms of flat out performance noise levels, the H100i Pro landed at around 2400 RPM for its peak fan RPM, and as usual, again, there's about 10% variance, so yours may be faster or a bit slower. These speeds had it slightly slower than the H100i V2 we tested, resulting in a proportional reduction in noise levels. The H100i V2 operated at 54 dBA output at max fan RPMs, with the H100i Pro at about 51 dBA. This has it comparable to the Kraken X72 at full speeds, which is a 3-fan cooler, and similar to some maxed out 280 coolers. As usual, you may adjust the fan speeds down to fit better performance or noise levels that your build targets, just depends on what you're looking for. So at 120 bucks, this thing's a pretty tough sell, to be completely honest. Corsair's own H100 IV2 is $105. And the EVGA CLC 280, which is a pretty good performer, but not really a looker, is $110. The H115i is $125, and that's another Corsair product, and one that we've actually pretty highly recommended. So at $5 more, Really, you might as well get the H115i, not the 115i Pro, that costs proportionately more than this one, but the old school 115i if you can find it. If you're really looking for the things that this includes, which is the ability to spin down to zero RPM and I guess more LEDs, then it's a $5 difference, the fans are smaller, the noise is higher. So if those things are okay with you, I guess it's worth it for that specific set of features. But for the most part, $120 is just simply too much for a 240 millimeter cooler when considering how many options there are on the market. Just looking at other Asetek coolers, not even considering people like Enermax or Silverstone or people who use Apolitech or Dynatron or any of the other vendors, cool it. Just looking at Asetek, you've got the older Kraken models that are still somewhat affordable if you can find them. A better choice would be something like Corsair's older models, the H100 IV2 which is 105 bucks. Uh, EVGA's models, the CLC 280, which EVGA is selling for dirt cheap because they're trying to establish a foothold in the market, even though it's the same overall quality of cooler. And then again, the 115i at 125 bucks. So the cooler, the, the H100i Pro here, it's fine. There's nothing really wrong with it, but it's not improved enough over the H100i V2 to really drive purchases unless you're looking for those few new features, which is LEDs and the ability to spin down to zero RPM when not under any reasonable load. And that you could do through other means if you really wanted to anyway. So those are the options that, uh, that you've got, I guess. Not the most impressive cooler on the market, but hopefully some of the other testing has given you some a good look at performance for pump speeds and performance for thermal paste application. The only thing here that really deserves one more note is although it's not a great value, the $120 is too much for the performance, the performance overall is okay. So if this cooler comes down in price to say $105 like the predecessor, then that's a perfectly fine buy. The H100 IV2 is actually a really good buy at its price and it's only overshadowed by a couple of 280 CLCs. So if this comes down in price, we're perfectly happy with it. Right now, it's just a bit too much for 90% of the market, but if you're in the 10% that wants the new features, go for it. There's nothing really screamingly wrong with it. So that's all for this one. As always, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Help us out directly. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats. They are finally in stock again and shipping now. So if you order now while it says add to cart, you'll actually get one shipped within a day of ordering it. And we also just added these posters with the video card teardown and explosion on it to the store. So check that out on the store as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.